He's gonna need one more thing, though. I think I want to take some time and figure some stuff out, and someone needs to fill in for me. He's your grandpa's. He'd want you to have him. Thank you. The jacket's gonna be a little big on you, though. Uh -huh. So we're back with another Superman and Lois episode for the final season with episode four, and this episode was just pretty much wrapping up Chrissy and Kyle's storyline, which is kind of nice. I will say I was kind of worried from the season being reduced with all its cast that we weren't going to wrap up a bunch of the stories. We ended up losing Sam Lane last week to wrap up his story and also make sense why he's not a series regular. Then we have John Henry Irons and Natalie Irons, who we still haven't really gotten wrapped up yet, but I'm sure by the end of the season, we'll probably see something. I'm glad they're still in the series. They're just not in every episode. And then on top of it, this episode, we had Chrissy and Kyle. This episode was just them getting married and then not getting married. But we'll talk about it as we go through this week's episode. And in this video, we'll be breaking down the plot, what happened during it, the changes to Superboy, as well as some of the Easter eggs I noticed during it. So let's start off with the beginning of the episode with Clark Kent coming back to life. Now, I do definitely think that this is way too soon. I was expecting at least one more week of this. It was interesting to show what they're doing with Sam's heart inside him and in bringing him back to life. I was fully expecting this not to work where he was going to come back to life and then drop dead by the end of this episode where they would have ultimately failed and had to come up with another solution. However, with the way they're doing this, they did add its own challenges by making it that he's not exactly the same as he once was being weaker, his powers aren't 100% yet, and pretty much showing that he's still in recovery mode. And one of the things I like how they did is they addressed how things have changed since he died. Jonathan now has powers, Sam Lane is now dead, and just the overall atmosphere of the family is kind of down and out because, well, Sam died, Jordan's on the outs with his mom because of Lex Luthor, and just everyone is kind of in a low morale. But with Clark being back, that's going to start to change as Superman brings the hope in everyone once again as he learns to figure out how to deal with his new health problems with his new heart and how he has to learn to take it easier. And they focus on that when they went training with Jonathan as he was flying with Jonathan and crash landed because his heart couldn't keep up with his power. At least that's how I'm seeing it right now that this 60 year old man's heart is not built to withstand Superman's physique and his powers. Even though it does have his blood within him because of the serum that Bruno Mannheim made, it's still not 100% a crypto heart which makes it so superman does not have all his powers and when we talk about the jonathan training stuff this had a couple references that i thought were fun they talk about how this is where jordan got trained originally when he got powers which is true this is where john jordan got trained back in the earlier seasons however the relationship between jonathan and clark are so different from between jordan and clark where jordan was still getting the hang of his powers he was having issues he didn't really get the jokes his dad was making, but Jonathan is more clicking with him. And that all ties back into the beginning of the show, where Clark and Lois thought Jonathan was the one that got the powers at first, where Jordan got mad because the perfect son was the one that got the powers, just like how Jordan was always the failure, always the outcast. He always felt like that. But now with Jonathan the star pupil having powers, it's going to add a more conflict to things, especially with how Jordan didn't want to go train with him, how he let Jonathan go do it all, because he's feeling down. And they explain it more in the episode later on, which we will touch on when we get to that point. But I do like how they've been touching on it, how Jordan's kind of dealing with what he's dealing with. Now, with the Jonathan training stuff, it's awesome to see how good he is with his powers, how he's just flying through the glaciers without a problem. Instead of pulling up and going above them, he just flies right through the glacier without a problem, showing his strength and his skill right off the bat. And I love how you can see the proud dad moments with Clark, how he's enjoying it being there with his son. And it did make me feel really bad for Jordan because, you know, if Jordan was there, they could have had a nice father-son moment with all of them together you know, working as a super family. And in this moment too, Clark did a couple references as well, talking about the Kessel Run from Star Wars, where Han Solo flies the Millennium Falcon through the Kessel Run, and then even referencing Fury Road, which is Mad Max Fury Road, as they fly next to each other going across a glacier, and that's where Clark's heart gives out, and he crashes into the ground. And later, even playing it off as, oh, it was nothing, I just took a fall, and Jonathan straight up rats him out, because his heart was skipping a beat, he crash landed, and everyone's pretty much worried about him because he has to recover. He literally just got a new heart put into him and he's already trying to act like he once was. And this is where we kind of go into the Jordan plot where Jordan is continuously listening to that message that Luther gave him about his mother choosing Jonathan over him. And you can really see how it's affecting him. Jonathan tells Jordan to get out of his room, stop hiding from the family, and to stop listening to the message because it's messing with his head. Which I was like, okay, this is totally foreshadowing Jordan, kind of getting confused, being manipulated, being used, maybe being controlled by Luther. But instead, they kind of wrapped up the story semi by the end of the episode. However, I thought there's going to be more implications to it. And this kind of ties into how Clark came back a little too quickly too, because I thought Jordan was going to have more time to deal with his problems, deal with his feelings, and have to question what his morality is when it comes to Luther, because he would want to take him out for killing his father and his grandfather. But instead, now that Clark's back, you kind of lose some of that. 
Instead, Jordan's blaming himself for a bunch of stuff. But again, I'll talk about it in a bit. I feel like I keep getting ahead of myself because we still have to talk about Clark and Lois talking about how Clark died. Clark saying that he can't even trust his own body anymore and he doesn't feel as strong as he once was. Even saying that his hearing is messed up, really showing that his death has impacted him at a larger scale. The Earth's strongest hero is now not as strong as he once was, which which could become a problem when it comes to versing Doomsday and the other characters. But now the Earth doesn't only have one superhero. We got two Superboys, we got Steel and Starlight. There are multiple people here who can help save the day. But I do really like how Lois relates to the story with her talking about her cancer and how her, and her operation, how she survived it, and talking about how Clark even said that the scars are what reminds them of what they survived. So I really like these moments showing Lois and Clark getting these really good moments after Clark died and came back to life. I love how Clark's even feeling alcohol now really showing that his genes are kind of a little messed up after being having a human heart put in him but it's really interesting to see what they're doing with this storyline and i really like how they played it up this episode now we'll talk about the wedding stuff that happened because i feel like the wedding stuff was kind of separated at first and then all the plot lines converged when the wedding actually started to happen but pretty much this episode was Chrissy and Kyle getting married. They came back. I was actually shocked to see them this episode because I thought they would have just referenced them after last episode. And we wouldn't actually see them because they're not series regulars. I thought we just wouldn't see them at all anymore. Chrissy's kind of having some doubts off the bat. She's worried about what her mom's going to think because she always feels like she's doing the wrong thing when it comes to her mom. And it really just shows the kind of the divide. Chrissy's still really young where Kyle's not, but Kyle wants to meet her mom. Even though there is definitely that age difference, he was excited to meet the family, kind of show what kind of man he is. And he was excited to start w this new family with Chrissy, but that kind of all went downhill. Now, when Kyle actually meets Mrs. Beppo, it was interesting because Mrs. Beppo is asking him about how his divorce went. And even comments how Lana would write a, le a letter of recommendation, kind of showing how they've moved past their divorce, how they're friends. And, you know, they just want what's best for each other, which I think is very adult. It's a very adult thing to do, very respectable, and it's kind of a nice little tie to show what's going on. One of the odd parts of this episode, episode two is that Kyle was asking Clark to be his best man. I guess he doesn't have any other friends, but he also wanted Superman to be his best man. And this is the thing. Like, I get it. It is a Superman and Lois show, but it doesn't really make sense for Kyle to have Clark as his best man because they weren't ever really best friends. I'm surprised it wasn't someone just from hit the fire hall. And I will say the wedding stuff was a little lackluster. It definitely, it, again, like I said at the beginning of the video, it definitely felt like this was just a wrap up the storyline. As you have Mrs. Beppo kind of asking all the major questions that anyone else would be asking watching the series. Like, did Kyle just marry Chrissy because of the baby? And how she even thinks that this marriage is moving too quickly because they haven't been together that long. And all of a sudden they're getting married once, she, once Chrissy found out she was pregnant. Which, to be true, that's where they kind of revolve this plot around. As Chrissy runs away from the wedding because she's scared it's moving too quickly because she's scared she's making a mistake. And I do love how Sarah tries to talk some sense into her as well, just trying to be a supporting stepdaughter to her. But that didn't really help because in the end, Chrissy left. Even though she still loves Kyle, she's just not ready to get married, which she was right. She said she didn't even know Kyle that well, which is 100% true because they literally weren't seeing each other for that long. They just started seeing each other. Chrissy got pregnant. Then they were, then they started to get married. And even Kyle was sad about what was going on because Chrissy left him. He was scared if he was making a mistake. And Clark was the one that's able to talk some sense to him, given that nice Clark Kent charm. And I do really like how they played this because Clark relates it to how he doesn't feel the same anymore. And he wonders if he ever will. Kind of relating that both of them are having big changes in their lives and they kind of have to figure out how to deal with it going forward. And they're only going to be able to do that if they take one foot at a time. Even Clark saying that you got to be patient and things will work out, which is kind of relating to him that he needs to be patient. He needs to take it easy because then eventually he'll be able to work out what's wrong with him, what he's able to do, what he's not, and how to become a better hero because of it. Now, the wedding doesn't end up happening, but Chrissy is able to get closure with her mom, getting that little connection that she hasn't had with her for a long time, which I thought was really nice. You know, having a good moment when they all go dance and party, because even, even if they can't have a wedding, they're still going to have a party. Just having like a nice good wrap up to the ending of the episode, which was nice. Now, before we actually talk about the last scene of the episode, let's jump back to what's going on with Jordan and Jonathan, because Jordan hears Gretchen, the woman that kidnapped Sam Lane was working for Lex Luthor. Now she's in Metropolis trying to get a hold of Otis, and it all turns out is because they were trying to kill her. Now before that, we find out her name is Cheryl Kimball, who is actually a character from the comics, not the mainstream ones though, but a Superman Aliens comic where she is a scientist that works at LexCorp Space Division, and it was investigating probe transmissions from outer space, who is catching and analyzing aliens. And I can't believe it was literally going into the Xenomorphs 
I was just shocked to find out when I googled her name that this was a alien Superman comic book. That feels like a super deep cut to have her in there. I thought she'd be a more notable character that was hiding in disguise, but I thought that was a cool little reference to that. But I do really like her and Lois's interaction where Lois is like, either you work with me or Lex Luthor kills you. This is Lois knowing how to work someone, knowing how to get what she needs for her story, and it shows her reporter side, which I always really like seeing that because it shows how smart she is, how dedicated she is, and how good she is at her job. All leading into Lois still trying to take down Luther with Luther going after her. So kind of, it's more of Lois versus Luther than Clark versus Luther this season. And obviously it's not going to end well, but it's really interesting to see what they're doing with the story. Now as we move forward, Clark even asks Lois why Jordan didn't take her. And Jonathan was the one that flew her to Gretchen. It's all because of Jordan being mad at her for choosing Jonathan over him. But I love how Clark relates it to him and Jonathan being on the outs back in the Bizarro World season. But eventually they came back together and were close again, which will happen with Jordan Lois and does happen with Jordan and Lois later on where Lois goes to talk to Jordan to work things out. And that's where we find out Jordan wishes she chose him, She, which is fair. When you find out your mother picked your sibling over you, you're going to feel upset. And, it, and Jordan's feelings are valid, even though he completely understands and even thinks that it was right for Lois to pick Jonathan because at that moment, Jonathan was the one without powers. He could have been at the most risk, unlike Jordan, who has powers and was more able to get away. And I love how they kind of have this mother-son moment where Jordan talks about how he feels like he's always screws things things up. He blames himself for both Clark and Sam's death. I don't understand how Sam's death would have been his fault because you know, maybe because he wasn't there, that's why. There wasn't really anything he could do in that moment. And he already did save Sam from death, from being buried alive. So I don't really see how he can blame himself. Now with Clark's situation, Clark was already dead after getting his heart ripped up by Doomsday. And yes, Jordan did end up getting it crushed because of Lex Luthor. But I do understand how this kid with superpowers feels like it's his fault for not being able to help more. And that's going to be a big thing from the season, especially with what they did with his super suit. Now I do love how Lois even talks about how it kills her that she made Jordan feel this way. Showing her love for her son and showing that she wants to make things right. She wants to get close together because Lois and Jordan were always the close ones and Jonathan Clark were the close ones together. But because Jordan got powers, it kind of swapped where the two non-powerless people got close to one another and then two power people got close to one another. So it's interesting to see how they're kind of reverting it once again where now Jonathan's going to get close with Clark again and Jordan's going to get close with his mother as he stays back to think things out and tries to get a better head on his shoulders and figure out what he wants to do. I totally thought that before this episode, though, that Jordan would have done something stupid because of Lex Luthor before Clark coming back and then they would have had to deal with that situation which also ties into why I think it was a little too soon for Clark to come back because I think they could have dealt with more consequences before that. Now in the end after that talk we end up seeing Jordan, Jordan and Jonathan both hearing a fire going on in Metropolis where Gretchen is and Jordan sends Jonathan to save the day. Again, don't really understand why Jordan wasn't the one to go as well like two super boys at the same time. They could have taken that out but this kind of ties in the fact where Jordan needs to take a step back from being Superboy so he could figure things out himself. Probably not the smartest move, but they were trying to keep Clark busy as well so Clark didn't go and strain himself while doing this and push his body a little too hard. I do find it funny that Jordan told Jonathan just to take a hoodie and then when he is there, Jor Jonathan literally walks through a fire with a hoodie. I'm like, your clothes, dude, your clothes would be burning to a crisp. You would be naked at this point. I don't understand why his clothes didn't catch more fire, but it was great to see him coming for the save and actually be a hero, getting one of those hero moments that Jordan got last season and showing that he can do the job as well until he gets blasted with fire by that fire villain. Honestly, I was trying to figure out who this guy could be because these are like the gauntlets that had the kryptonite in them before, but instead fire is coming out. And my first thought is, oh, this kind of reminds me of Heat Wave. Makes sense for the comics. There are a bunch of pyro characters as well that it could be. I mean, I even thought of Firefly for a second, but that's a Batman villain. It wouldn't make sense for him to be there. However, if you have any idea who you think this might be before we get an actual name reveal, let me know down in the comments. But it was great to see Superman in action once again as he comes in, sucks in all the fire and stops the flames and just literally walks up to the guy and makes him explode because he keeps putting out the output of the machinery as Superman literally walks up to him. Not the smartest villain, but he got taken out pretty easily. Great to see Superman in action. Great to see Jonathan get a save and also even have his father be proud of him afterwards, which is kind of a difference between him and Jordan because even though Jordan saves lives in the times that he's helped out, Clark still got mad at him for getting involved because he didn't want him to be there. So you can kind of see how he treats his sons differently in this moment, but also you can see how he's proud that both his sons wanted to be heroes. Now, then we have them back at the house and Jordan decides to give Jonathan his suit because he needs to take a step back and figure things out, like I was saying earlier, and passes on the Superboy mantle to Jonathan. But I don't really like how they did this because I think they should have given Jonathan a new suit rather than giving them Jordan's suit. And I'm hoping they maybe make some modifications to it. I'm still not 
not a fan of the suit. I want an actual House of L suit to come to one of them or both of them. And it's interesting to see what they're doing. Kind of making it so Jonathan gets to the forefront of everything during this season. And Jordan will probably come back near the end to help save the day because he'll need to step in the shoes to do it. Because the entire family will need to get together in order to stop Luther. And I'm very excited to see what they do. And then the end of the episode... When Clark and Lois get to have some of their alone time and her phone starts going off, it's revealed that Superman is alive. There's been a sighting and now everyone knows. That means Luther knows. That's not a good thing because she, he was literally announced dead three weeks ago and now all of a sudden he's back. So it's going to raise a lot of questions. I'm sure it's going to raise a lot of press. I'm still thinking that the Kent secret is going to be revealed to the world at some point this season. And I'm really excited to see what they do with this season with just the different storylines, how they're focusing on Luther, how they're focusing on Doomsday, and now how Clark has to deal with his new heart. With that, let me know. What did you think of this episode of Superman and Lois? Were there any easter eggs or details you noticed do you know who that fire guy is let me know and we can talk about it in the comments thanks for watching this video if you liked it make sure to hit the like and the subscribe button it helps out the channel a lot and you get to stay up to date with all my superman and lois breakdowns as well as my penguin agatha all along and more marvel and dc stuff thanks for watching and i'll talk to you next week when we watch another episode of superman and lois